This ugly thing is Yamaha a mutant tone generator. It's one of the Yamaha's first models. It came out in 1996 after MU5, 50 and 80. Unfortunately, there's not much information available about this particular model. Yamaha tried to please home users with low price, simple ideas design, cheap materials, but exceptional sound quality, lots of features and sophistication. At least that's what their adverts were saying. Not the ideas and cheap parts, of course. They call it AWM2 Time Generation Technology, which stands for Advanced Wave Memory. On their memory is 4 megabytes full of brilliant instrument samples. MU10 has 676 normal voices on 21 drum set, from which 128 voices can be used in GM mode, 480 in XG mode, on 579 voices in TG300B mode, which is practically a Roland GS emulation. It provides 16 part multi timbre capacity on full 32 note polyphony. MU10 can utilize its 3 DSP effect processors to provide 11 types of reverb, 12 types of chorus, on 43 types of variation. I'd say that Roland was Yamaha's main competitor. Roland did its own canvas series for a long time and used its own GS extension along with the general MIDI. Yamaha's decided they want to have their own extension and created XG, which stands for Extended General MIDI. Their first XG capable module was MU80 that was released in 1994 and was aimed at musicians, but they also wanted some cheap model for all users and that was MU10. It could be compared to Roland's SC88ST, only Roland had 32 multi timbre parts, 22 less voices and it didn't look like something pulled out of somebody's ass. MU10 is basically Yamaha SW60XG or Yamaha DB50XG in a plastic housing. I've got it literally for a couple of quid, and for that price, it's expected to be a bit tatty on HRS, but it's working, and this will matter us and what's important for this review. Even though it doesn't look like much, it's perfectly fine MIDI module with lots of features. It does exactly what you'd expect from a tone generator. It's generating tones. Just connect your device through 5 pin classic MIDI port on a fun. It's got all necessary ports and features. Most important port for any DOS gamer or someone who wants to connect keyboard or any MIDI instrument would be MIDI in. Through MIDI in, you can connect your sound card or some MPU 401 interface to make your DOS games use Yamaha's sample based synth, or you can use it to connect your keyboard and get to use Yamaha's instruments instead of the ones packed in the keyboard. 8-pin mini MIDI port is for connecting MU10 to a serial port in your computer. For that, you need to set this switch to a proper position. When set to MIDI, it uses MIDI input naturally. PC1, PC2 and Mac positions send data directly to the connected device completely bypassing MU10's internal tone generator. In this case, you need some sort of editing software like XG Edit for example to make full use of the module because there are no controls on the device itself. It's got only a 3.5 inch jack connector as an output that can be used as a line out connected to an amplifier and since it's got its own amplifier, it can also be used to connect to headphones. Volume is controlled by this fidgety slider. It may look a bit dodgy, but it actually works. I don't like using internal amps, they usually cook up the sound quality, but in this case, I simply had no choice. Here you can find two input jacks, through which you can connect mic, guitar or some kind of CD player or whatever you want to connect, which allows you to mix those sources with what's coming out of the MU10's processor. For example, something like this. You can play back a MIDI file and mix it with your speech. It supports GM on XG extensions, but it's also compatible with Roland's GS extension through TG300B mode. However though, you can't switch between the modes manually, because there are no controls or even display on the device, it can be done only through the system exclusive messages. Unlike other Yamaha's MU series tone generators, MU10 can be powered by 6 AA batteries, which is a great touch since you can use it with your laptop, on the train or even the bloody Everest. As always, I recorded some in-game music using the module, take a listen.
since the module supports XG extension, I'm gonna pit it against newer and more powerful Yamaha MU2000. To be honest, it doesn't sound half bad for all users sound module, it actually sounds brilliant in games. What really surprised me though, was its XG performance. The tracks I used were made specifically for XG extension and of course they didn't utilize all of Yamaha's 480 voices, but it sounded almost the same as MU2000. Sure, MU2000 produces clean output, but the instruments sound very similar. Don't let it put you off with its appearance. It's a cracking little device, which costs next to nothing, is very capable and sounds amazing. If you're on the budget, this module will make you very happy, if you hide it from your side it is. 
It's much better choice than SW60XG or DB50XG. They cost an arm and a leg these days. There's probably no other sound module that sounds this good and costs so little. There's only one tiny drawback. Since the module is about billion years old, it is quite difficult to find one on eBay or anywhere else. And that's it for today. Leave the comment and see you next time. Cheers.